Dude, I disagree with you and I have two reasons. First, India is not the richest empire in the world. Mansa Musa Kingdom was. So uh, this is uh, with reference to the video I made about Chinggis Khan. Why Chinggis Khan refused to invade India. In which I said that India was the richest country in the history of, of in the known history of humanity. So this gentleman is disagreeing. He's saying that Mansa Musa's kingdom was the richest empire in the world, not India. And this is a, a comment I have got lots of times. This is a question many people have asked me. Yesterday, Ranveer Alabadia also sent me a, a, one of the a link about this. So hi, Ranveer, if you're watching, I'm sure you all know who he is, right? So, so what's the truth? So uh, here, here's the fact. Uh, Mansa Musa was a king of Mali. So where is Mali? Let's go to the map. Let me show you on the map because we need to. <laughs> the map is our best friend. Okay, here's the map. Let's take a look at Western Africa. So as you can see here, if you can see my mouse pointer, this is the modern day nation of Mali. So the kingdom of Mali was in this region. It included Mauritania, Ghana, uh, Guinea, and Côte d'Ivoire, etc. This, this entire region of Western Africa, this southwestern region of ancient, of ancient Africa was called the kingdom of Mali. And their king was Mansa Musa. Now, this uh, region is very influential even in the US today. Uh, what we call blues music comes from Western Africa. So you have many uh, musicians like Tumani Diabate and uh, Vufa Kature and many other musicians. So it's been a very influential region. Uh, even in modern times. This was a very rich region in the past, uh, in the first half of the of the second millennium CE. And this kingdom of Mali had very extensive gold resources. And that's why the kingdom of Mali was very rich. So Mansa Musa was uh, the king of Mali in the early 14th century. Okay, he was the king in the early 14th century, I think between 1310 and 1325, uh, 30 thereabouts. Okay, and he is reputed to be the richest individual in the history of the world, in the known history of the world. So his wealth is estimated to be in today's dollars to be worth about $400 billion in today's money. $400 billion, that was his worth in today's money. So if we compare, Jeff Bezos has a, is worth about 177 or 180 billion dollars today. Elon Musk is about 150 billion dollars worth, and Bill Gates is worth about 125 billion dollars as of today, this this month. So if you compare Mansa Musa, he was worth about 400 billion dollars at that time. Now, does that make the Kingdom of Mali the richest empire in the world? Does it? Does it really? So think about it this way. You have heard of the great uh, Sri Padmanabha Swami temple in Kerala. One temple, right? Now recently it was uh, discovered that it contains an enormous treasure which has been donated to this temple over thousands of years. And the minimum value of the treasure in this one temple exceeds one trillion dollars. Right? So there is more than two and a half times the entire wealth of Mansa Musa in one Indian temple. Hmm? And it's just one temple. So that is the comparison you need to see. One individual being super rich doesn't make his country the richest country in the world. Let me show you a different example. Let's, uh, let me show you a different... Uh, let me share my screen and show you an image. Here we are. Okay. So this is from Angus Madison's uh, book. Angus Madison is a very famous, I think, American economist. He did a comparative st study of the GDPs of the world in, in ancient history, starting from, as you can see here, 1, 1 AD all the way to 2003 AD. And what he found is that India was consistently the richest country in the world for the best part of the first 1500 years 
since 1 AD, right? And in my opinion, he has made certain oversimplifications. India may have, and according to his calculations, India accounted for at least a third of the world's GDP for most of this time period. In my opinion, if he had calculated correctly and not made certain assumptions, India would have been closer to half of the world's GDP. But that's not the point here. If we see the data here, this is India. If you can see my mouse pointer and you can see the GDP, right? 1 AD, 1000 AD, 1500 AD, etc. Compare Africa with it. In 1 AD, okay, Mansa was, Musa was in the 13th century. So it's closer to 1500. So at that time, India's GDP was this here, 60,500. And look at Africa's GDP, the whole of Africa, 19,383. Less than one third of India's GDP. And that's the whole of Africa, not just Mali. And therefore, despite Mansa Musa being the richest hum uh, human in human history, that wealth that he had was just a drop of water in the ocean. India was historically the richest civilization in the history of humanity for most of history and even what the Europeans call prehistory. Because I, I would say that during the Harappan era, of India's history, India may have accounted for two-thirds of the entire world's GDP. That's how rich India was. That's how large the civilization was. That's how prosperous it was. And it was completely fully industrialized at that time, 3,000, 4,000 years before BCE. So India has always been the richest civilization in the history of the world. Despite Mansa Musa being the richest individual that we know of, his wealth was just a small drop in the ocean, in the big in the context of the big picture, right? So I hope that explains and uh, and puts this question to rest, right? Mansa Musa's kingdom was rich, yeah, sure, but it was nothing, not nothing compared to what India was in its entirety. Now, the, now another question I would like to ask you is, where did all this wealth go? Why is Mali so poor today, right? If Mansa Musa, Musa was so rich and he had so much gold and so much wealth, then why is Mali so desperately poor today? And the answer is, what is the official language of Mali today? What do they speak in their official communications? They speak Francais, they speak French. It was French colonization that extracted all the wealth out of Mali. And that's why Europe is so rich. Because Africa was very rich. And Europe colonized Africa. They divided up Africa, the French, the Germans, the Dutch, the Belgians, the British, the Italians, and who else? Everyone. And they extracted everything of value out of Africa and also out of India. And that's how Europe became so rich. And that's how there is no gold left in Mali today. All these enormous reserves of gold were extracted out of Mali by the French. And the French were not, not the only ones. There were so many more abuses done to Africa by the various Europeans. That's how Africa is dirt poor today. That's how Africa is in such abject poverty and misery, despite it having had brilliant, beautiful culture and beautiful civilizations throughout its, throughout its history. So that is what colonization does. And that's how Africa ended up where it is today. Right? So I hope this answers your question.